Alright everybody, welcome to the newest, most raw, unfiltered wrestling podcast to hit the internet. We are Jobber Bros. I am Donnie Spokes, you got my man Johnny Rude, and we are the Jobber Bros. And what we do here at Jobber Bros... It's exactly that. We love jobbers. We love wrestling. We want to give you the best of wrestling and the best of jobbers. So, <clears throat> both of us have been wrestling fans since we were kids. Um, pretty much watching wrestling all our lives. And we realized as we got older, we both loved wrestling. Uh, we started watching it together more and more. And here we are doing our very own podcast and we're going to do it different than everybody else. We are raw. We are unfiltered. So, enough about that. Let's get into the meat and potatoes <laughs> of this shit. How about that, huh? Hell Here yeah, we go. Brother. First so, of all, though, how was your day? It was, it, it was good. It was better than it was on Saturday. I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> watching Saturday, out for the fucking buses. Yeah, yeah. Saturday, I had a rough day. I had to drive into the city. It was terrible. I hate the city. N- no bueno. <laughs> no so, bueno. <laughs> but no, no, sir. But, uh, you know, we are doing much better today than we were on Saturday. That is for sure. E- even for a Monday, surprisingly. Yeah, most people hate Mondays. Myself included. So. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Uh, work was uh, just fine. So, awesome. Awesome. Why don't, awesome. Uh, why, don't, why don't we talk about what we got going on this week? It is a it is a big week leading up to even bigger weeks, but this is a fun week in my opinion. Yeah, it's a big week, especially well as we're talking about today on the podcast. In AEW, it's going to be a massive mm-hmm. week with Grand Slam. Two nights, a two-hour rampage on Friday. Of course, we got a regular two-hour yeah. uh, Dynamite on Wednesday, and that's what we're going to really hammer in tonight is uh, the Dynamite preview. Go over our predictions because we uh, we like to do a little thing. Uh, the Jobber Bros, you want to you want to talk about it, champ? I do, I do, I do. That's right. I am the champ. So. Johnny Root was actually the one that 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 started this thing. So way back before, I mean, we got way deep into it at this point, but we used to make up a PDF form and do picks on who we thought was going to win. And whoever had the most points at the end of the night won. Well, that uh, excelled into um, mailing each other championship belts. So... I don't have the first belt we ever did nearby, but um, <laughs> oh, thank God, <laughs> <laughs> which it's 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 funny, uh, yeah. Uh, so the L title, the L title, <laughs> yeah, we took yeah, he he took a uh, a United States Championship belt from Walmart and spray painted it. And you want to tell him why you spray painted it? Yeah, because uh, <laughs> it was going to be my first WrestleMania down in Tampa the the first time around, and. Uh, they fucking canceled it due to COVID. And so and it took like eight months to get my refund back from Ticketmaster. So uh, I was pretty pissed. So I took the belt, spray painted a big L on it, wrote Tampa and red spray paint on it. And that was the belt we went with. Yeah. So now we, uh, Johnny Rude was kind enough to uh, upgrade us to this beautiful piece of artwork right here where we, call it the pay-per-view pick championship belt and we mail it back and forth to each other and we uh it's it's bragging rights it's a fun thing that we like that we absolutely like to do and so what we're gonna do tonight uh you know as one of our segments is going to be we're gonna talk about our picks we're gonna share our picks with you uh feel free to comment what you think about our picks, maybe even comment what you think your picks are. We would love to hear your feedback and what you think and what you think about our picks and all that, all that fun stuff. So we're going to absolutely go through that 
100% tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. Probably going to argue about it. It'll be great. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, we got a little Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants action going on. But we got the <laughs> little, little title belt. Maybe one day we'll upgrade to a, a big belt. But, hey, we, it's fun, you know? That's all that matters, even though it, that belt could only fit my five-month-old. Uh, it's not going yeah. around it, either of our ways. <laughs> It just uh, it just fits around my head. We figured that out about two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll insert the picture of that right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, we will. All right. So, yeah. So that's what we do. We love this belt. Currently, I am the reigning, defending, undisputed. Looks like a bib. Uh, cha- you know, pay per view <laughs> pick champion. Uh. And we will see what happens after after Grand after Grand Slam. Now I know I know what you're all gonna say. Grand Slam is technically not a pay per view, but it's a big event, and we like doing it. Yep, just like WWE doesn't host pay per views anymore. They're premium live events, but nonetheless, we still uh, do it. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, all right, so let's. Uh, Let's get into it then, shall we? Let's uh, let's talk let's about it. some of our some of our picks. So I'm going to give you, sir, first uh, first crack. We got a ROH World Championship match: Claudio versus Chris Jericho. Who who mm. you got? Number one, I truly think this match is going to slap. I'm a huge Claudio fan. I loved him even in the WWE as Cesaro. Super strong. Super entertaining. Not the best on the mic, but I have seen him getting a bit better. Uh, and Jericho is just goaded. As you know, he's just one of the greatest of all time. I met him one time in, in uh, Tampa. That was awesome. Um, great dude. Both of them great dudes. But I'm going to have to go with Claudio on this one. I think Jericho has the professionalism to put Claudio over and kind of cement his reign and, and uh, add some more prestige to that Ring, the Ring of Honor uh, championship. So, what about you? And uh, I'm I'm going to agree there with uh, every, absolutely everything you said. I also have liked the the Swiss man himself since his WWE days, and my favorite was the uh, the bar. That was one of the my bar. favorites. Yeah, the bar. That was we are the bar. That was that was one of my that was one of my favorite. Uh, oh, not yeah. my not my favorite tag team of all time, but one of my favorites. Um, and he's just he puts on a show, and he can he can elevate titles just as good as the next guy, just as uh, you know, almost as good as you know, John Moxley or Chris Jericho. And I'm probably going to get booed when I say this, but even somebody like uh, Roman Reigns who can elevate a, a, a titles in a serious amount. And I think that's good for, you know, Tony Khan and AEW and Ring of Honor now that they're they're mashing and breaking down all those walls that were built across the different platforms and being able to bring the ROH championship on AEW in the Blackpool Combat Club and go up against a seven-time world champion like Chris Jericho, who's who's got all the stats, who's got goaded. You know, that's he's he's got it. He is the goat. He's got the goat. He wears the goat. He is the goat. You know, yeah. somebody like that is going to stand the test of time. And I think Claudio is going to be that next, you know, goat who's going to stand the test of time. So I'm uh, for for those reasons, I go with Claudio. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, first first segment, and we're we're already agreeing. That's that's good. You know, no <laughs> arguing as of yet. Yeah, um, there's I do there's have still to a say, couple more. <laughs> there's quite a, yeah, quite a few. <laughs> but uh, while we're still on this this match, I did want to bring up to you. I did see something online on the good old Twitter earlier. I think there's going to be shenanigans in this match, and we kind of bring you to that point is that we've been seeing a lot of. Uh, action with Garcia, Daniel Garcia lately. Mm. Um, and he's been kind of, you know, he hasn't been really talking to Claudio that much, but he has been talking to Brian Danielson, 
who is a part of the Blackpool Combat Club with Claudio. So what I was thinking is maybe Chris Jericho's having a rough time with Claudio. Jake Hager comes out trying to do some malarkey, some some shenanigans. And Garcia Mm -hmm. comes out and, you know, assists Claudio in retaining, which then leads to him being inducted into the Combat Club. So I can I can see Garcia coming out in 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 multiple different manners, even without anybody from the Jericho Appreciation Society coming out and and doing some some shenaniganery during during the match. I could see him coming out just because Chris Jericho is playing dirty in itself, which we've seen in the past weeks. That the reason why. Daniel Garcia has been torn is because he knows Chris can win without doing any kind of shenanigans or playing dirty and Jericho does it anyways. And that's, that's when this whole thing with Brian Danielson started, that hasn't been Daniel Garcia's bag to play dirty. He's trying to play clean. And now he's the ROH Pure championship, uh, mm-hmm. pure champion. You know, he took it off of Wheeler, Wheeler Yuta by playing pure and the pure rules. And I think that's kind of what he's morphing into and why he's torn between Blackpool and JAS. And he really respects Brian Danielson. And I can see him coming out to, I don't know necessarily know to pick sides or induct quite yet. I think we still have a little more time before that happens, but I can definitely see him helping out the Blackpool Combat Club to keep Chris Jericho in check. All right, good stuff. All right, well, I think that's going to be a banger, like I said. I don't know what part of the card is going to be on Wednesday, but uh, I can't wait for that match personally. (laughs) Yeah, that's uh, that's, going to be raw rough heavy hitter match i mean yeah you know even you got claudio with those european uppercuts that are just nasty and let's let's take a side bet here i want to take a side bet on this all right how many times do you think chris jericho is going to be swung around like like 360 successful swings yeah, like the Cesaro swing, three sixties, mm-hmm. uh, mi- middle of the ring. How many times? Mm, say like nine. Now I'm going. I'm going on the high side. I'm going. I'm going fifteen. I think Ooh. man's going to keep. I think man's <laughs> going to keep trying break. You're trying to break records. I think the most time we've ever seen him swing anybody was what twenty three, and it was Seth Rollins. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yep. Something <laughs> something absolutely insane. All right. So yeah. All right. That's it's gonna be a banger. Absolutely. Well, let's go on to uh a next one we have here on the card, and that would be the all Atlantic mm. championship match with uh Pac versus freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. What you got for this one? I'm uh, I'm afraid to go first on this one, but uh, I I really I like I like both wrestlers. I really do. I I like freshly squeezed. I like what he does. But man, the bastard! He is a bastard, and I I love him. I am going with Pac. I'm gonna say he retains, okay? Because I think we got a one. I think we got a fight an all out brawl of Pac and Miro coming down the line. Like that's that's what I think. I think that's what we're leading to. Orange Cassidy is gonna give give Pac a fight. Hundred percent. But Pac is nobody to sleep on. He is deviant. He is mean. Nat he don't give a shit. He wants to win. He wants to elevate that title. Plus, on top of that, he's a double champion with the uh, trios trios championship, which, uh, in 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 my opinion, they should have been the first ever uh, trios tag team champion. But we're not going to go too deep into that now, are we? Uh, <laughs> so, 
Um, but yeah, I, I think he's going to stay a double champion for a little bit. And I, I think we're going to see some extremely amazing things down the, down the line from him, because I, I, I think it's too soon for him to, to not have that title. Like he's, he's got this one a hundred percent in my book. All right. It's a good take for sure. It's a tough one for me. Cause I do, I love both these guys, both polar opposite styles um, mm-hmm. completely you bring up a good point though that would be a crazy match i'd love to see pack versus miro for that title um right. another coin like you said best friends and cassidy you know they fell short for the trios and you know orange is a day oneer. you know he's been here since the inception of AEW, and i feel like you know he's he's, he's, he's due you know it's about his time and um but it's a tough one it's a tough one you you brought up a lot of good points. Uh, match is going to be great. It's going to have you know Cassidy doing his his little leg kicks and you know his hands in his pockets, all this <laughs> crazy shit like he always does. But um, I think I think you're on the I think we're on the same page here. So I think I'm going to go pack as well. Wow, the fact wow. That he's, uh, yeah, I, I mean I love Orange Cassidy. I think it's about his time, but I don't think it's his time against Pack per se, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, I can't, I completely understand. And I think somebody like, I mean, the all Atlantic champion is, is de- defended everywhere, which is great. I, I think we're in store for some extraordinary things for Orange Cassidy. Uh, and it's either, it's either going to be, um, the TNT title or eventually the, uh, AEW World Championship, and I think if they hold out, right, and he, he he bides his time, so to speak, you know, he bides his time, and he he waits for the right person to go up against for the uh, AEW World Championship. It's going to be a massive pop, a massive elevation when he does win, because I'm I'm going to tell you right now, we've seen Orange Cassidy fight a number of people. And I would, I would love to see him either fight Danielson or MJF for that AEW World Championship because I think him and MJF would be a would be a match because they they do the same type of thing on on the opposite ends as where they they perform fun shenanigans but. Orange Cassidy's is in a uh, fun-loving way, and MJF's is in a like a malevolent kind of way. So I think I think seeing those two styles would would be would be an awesome clash, in my opinion. Now, do we? I mean, you got Death Triangle and Orange Cassidy with best friends. We got we got any interference going on? Uh, I don't think so. Usually the best friends will, you know, unless they're going to try for a heel turn or something, they usually stay in their own lane, let Orange do his own thing in his singles bouts. Uh, and yeah, I can't see the, uh, the other Death Triangle members coming out, Penta and Phoenix. Um, yeah, I don't see any interference. What about you? No, I, I don't see any other because I think they're, they're two teams that, that respect each other where the disrespect is right now is between pack and orange Cassidy. And I think the rest of them are really just, just going to stay out of it. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I forgot about something that happened last week. Uh, You know, when the firm was created, you know, MJF's group, uh, Stokely had mentioned that uh, Ethan page was going to be going after the all Atlantic championship. Now it kind of makes me second guess what I just said, aligning with pack with you because I could, more so see a feud between Ethan Page and Orange Cassidy than Pac and Orange Cassidy. Yeah. Uh, I don't... <laughs> uh, man, I don't know. I don't know, man. I mean, really I think... 50-50. It really, it really, it really could. I don't know. I could, I could see, I could see a Pac and Ethan Page uh, feud. I can't see that going on for long because Pac is just such a dominant wrestler. 
Yeah, you but know, the, like the firm's his, got freaking, uh, what, W. Morrissey? The yeah. Seven foot tall motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a huge bitch. Um, yeah. So, oh, I, I don't know. That would be that would be tough. I don't I don't I don't even want to think about that yet. Yeah, <laughs> that, no, that hurts, we'll get that there. hurts. That hurts <laughs> my brain. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, so we'll see. It's number no matter what. It's gonna be a, a great great match, um, just like the first Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and like we said, we don't know where these matches are in the card. We just we just kind of write them down, and and we and we pick, but. Any order that this is going to end up coming out in, it's it's going most almost all of these matches are are going to be bangers, hundred percent. So absolutely, what we got what we got next is the AEW Interim Women's Championship four way match with Tony Storm versus Britt Baker versus Athena. Versus Serena Deeb. Tell that me, is. you're this is complete and utter chaos. It's going to be chaos. You got you got the the newly crowned interim women's champion Tony Storm. That's just a straight up professional wrestler. You got Doctor Britt Baker. You got the fallen goddess and the women of a thousand holds. Like what are we what what are we doing here? <laughs> what is going to happen? Tell me your thoughts. Well, I got one question. Where the fuck's my girl Jamie Hater? Why is she not in here? Yeah, she got screwed by Britt Baker at the pay per view, and uh, where the fuck is she? I mean, I feel like she deserves. <laughs> I, I think she's gonna get involved one way or another with shenanigans. Overall, I do think Tony's gonna retain, but uh, we saw last week Hater came out. She grabbed the chair from Britt Baker. Looked like she was gonna hit Britt Baker with a chair, and she smashes Tony Storm with it. Like she's, I think she's out for blood. It doesn't matter who it is. I think she's going to somehow get involved and uh, cause some chaos in this match. Yeah, on top of the chaos that it's already going to be, it's going to be crazy. But overall, I do think Tony Storm is going to walk out still uh, interim champion. Yeah. So uh, I'm a little torn. I got two names written down on my sheet here, and uh, I don't know. I don't know because so both both these wrestlers it's it's funny that it's this four way match because there's two wrestlers in here that I really like and two wrestlers that I cannot stand watching that just <laughs> they they really just piss me off. Um, so the two wrestlers that I like are Tony Storm and Athena. I I really like them. They are great. And now all, b- before I keep going, all the women in this match are excellent professional wrestlers, but they are doing their jobs if I like some and I hate some. Let's all keep that in the back of our minds that if we say we cannot stand this person, that means they are doing their damn job. Now, okay. I cannot stand Britt Baker and Serena Deeb. They, they, Jesus Oh, man, they make me so mad, which is the heat they want. That's a good thing, but it's it's constant, and I'm just kind of like, ugh. So I'm torn between Tony and Athena. I, I A lot of people really do think Tony Storm is going to retain until Thunder Rosa comes back. I think we're going to see – I think we're going to see a change. Um. I don't I'm having a tough time here. I really <laughs> am. I, I really gotta I really gotta go with my gut on this one. I, I know it might seem a little soon, but uh but I'm going with Athena. <clears throat> Cause uh, listen, anybody here that takes this title can can elevate it. So it's not it's it's not the question of of elevation. It's it's gonna be a question of how deep? How deep are we going to get into this feud with this four, with these four women? And I think I think I think we're going to get hella deep. And I think that's going to start with a, a a title change. You know, I can I can see I can foresee a lot of things. I don't want to go into too much detail 
I want to save that for other moments and what we see after um, Grand Slam here. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Athena on this one, and I do agree that there is gonna be uh, some shenaniganery with uh, with Jamie Hader. I, I, yeah. I think I think she is definitely going to cost Britt Baker a chance to win. Like I think Absolutely. she's going to come close, but she's she's going to yank that carpet right from under her. She's going to be like, Mm-mm, "Not today, today, yeah. not today." So nah, there, absolutely. there's that. I mean, that's that's a tough one. Uh, just between Tony and Athena. I mean, you saw it. It took me. I even had the names written down going, I'll pick one eventually. Yeah, well, now I did. <laughs> so, there we go. All right. Uh, all right. So, yeah, we're on the same page with that. Um, real quick, let me just check something. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Why is this blinking? <laughs> this is what I me- I was messing with my mic. Because I don't know what's going on with it. I'll have, to, I'll have to mess with that. Anyways, as long as you can still hear me, we should be okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I can hear you. All right, good stuff. Um, all right. All right, so on to segment four here, where we're coming mm. close to the end of this uh, night one of Grand Slam. We got the AEW Tag Team Championship match. Swerve in Our Glory, who are the current champions, versus the Acclaimed, who just fell short against Swerve in Our Glory. Uh, they got a lot of momentum. John Cena's posting... Fucking Max Caster on his Instagram every other, every other week. Everybody truly loves the acclaimed at this point. What you thinking? I'm thinking scissor me, daddy ass. That's what I'm thinking, man. I'm I'm a hundred. Oh, I love both these teams. I do. You know, I was on I was on Twitter the other day, and 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 Keith Lee made me love him even more because he was wearing a uh pain from Naruto T-shirt, and that's that's one of my my favorites. Um, but I love the acclaim. They are so fun to watch. Both teams are fun to watch. It's, it's, it's gonna be a banger. No doubt. They're going to drop fucking bombs and it's, it's going to be ridiculous. I really would love to see the acclaimed win and that's, that's who that's who I'm going with, man. Daddy that's ass and the acclaimed. Me too, baby. Scissor you through the fucking camera here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, man. Yeah, they they gotta get it at this point. And I could see, you know, falling out of you know, Swerve and our glory have been great. They they're a great team together. Then they, you know, they came into the company not a team, and they became a team into the company. Yeah. But uh I could see, you know, <laughs> Maybe Swerve takes the pin and Lee gets pissed and turns on him. One of them's turning heel, I feel like, at the end. Uh, whether it's Swerve or Lee, someone's going to get pissed off and the team's going to break up. That's, that's what I'm thinking at this point for these guys. Wow. All right. So so does that mean you're rolling with the Acclaimed as well? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Acclaimed wow, for the right. win. Acclaimed, Acclaimed. for the win. Yeah. I think Acclaimed they're taking it home. for the win. Yeah, man. They just... Because the, these these tag team, I mean, let's let, let's think about how far these tag team titles have come. And now, Swerving Our Glory is only the what the fourth team to to hold these uh, championship belts. You had uh, uh, Scor- Scorpio Sky and Frankie Kazarian. Yep. SU. Then you had yep SU. Then you had. Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page. Um, the then, then the Bucks. Then, um, was it Jurassic? Yeto? No. Oh no, uh, no, it was it was, it was uh, Penta and Phoenix. So they're the sixth team, yeah, because it was Penta mm-hmm. and Phoenix, uh, Jurassic Express, and then uh, Swerve in Our Glory. And think about that six, the sixth team to hold the title. In three years, right, of of the company, almost four now, I think it, we're getting close. Mm-hmm. What, whatever it is, forgive me, I don't remember exact dates. I'm lucky if I remember my own name sometimes. Um, 
but it's, it's six teams in in three years. Like they're these teams are holding this title because of how prestigious it is. It's not it's not just jumping around like hot potato like some of these other companies do. They are they are putting these titles on the map. They have been on the map. They are a pinnacle on the map. And I think the acclaimed would be the next team just to keep keep elevating these titles. So that's, you know, I love I love tag team. AEW, they said when they started this company that they were going to put tag team wrestling back on the map. And Jesus age Christ, they fucking did. Yep, tag team very- wrestling has never been been better than 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 it is today and i say that from somebody who's been you know i i mentioned that uh you know uh i had a favorite tag team and that is the the brothers of destruction they are the old time the undertaker's my all-time favorite wrestler you can't kill the dead man <laughs> kane it's just you know devil's favorite demon man you can't you can't, you can't be. That's my, that's my all-time favorite tag team, favorite wrestler. The, the, the acclaimed is right up there with some of these guys that elevate titles. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're gonna take it to the next level. I think they're gonna have a long, nice reign. Yeah, everybody loves the acclaimed. Everybody and, loves uh, the acclaimed. All right, so now the final one, and I'm glad I get to ask you this question because. <laughs> I'm concerned, but it's all right. Which this probably is going to be the main event anyways. But you got yeah. AEW World Championship match between two Blackpool Combat Club members, John Moxley and Brian Danielson. Yikes, man. <laughs> Peter, who you got? Who you got? Man, this one is so tough, but uh, I have to give it to my man Brian, Brian oh. Danielson. And you know what's funny? I saw online before. I already had my mind made up about this, but I saw, and it actually is true. Every time the man on my shirt, CM Punk, has left the company, started with Ring of Honor, then WWE, now it's AEW, but in Ring of Honor and WWE. As soon as he walked out, who became champion next? This guy right here. Brian Danielson. Daniel Bryan in WWE. Mm. And now, you know, he didn't walk out, but he suspended, and he caused a bunch of shit to happen. Well, he didn't cause it, but he cer- certainly stirred the pot up and caused, you know, <laughs> a bunch of... There was a lot of pot foods. stirring. Yeah, so... Uh, I mean, I saw a I lot mean, of muffin eating, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, a lot of muffin eating, a lot of chewing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think not even despite that, I just thought that was a funny coincidence. I think Brian, it's time for him to hold a world title again. I mean, Moxley, I love him. He's probably my favorite wrestler in it, probably in everything, but definitely in AEW. Um, but uh, he he was about to go on fucking vacation before CM Punk, you know, and the Young Bucks and Omega did all this shit. So. I think he's going to get his vacation, you know, go go with Renee, go where the fuck they want. And I think Brian's going to have to take it up with MJF. <laughs> but, you know what, you answer, and then I'm going to bring up my butt. Okay. Uh, and I, I have a butt, too, so I will I will uh, say, say, say my butt before you get to your butt. Um, and then we could share, you know, then we share both of our butts. Share, share butts. <laughs> All right. Sure, we're going to share butts, man. <laughs> butts the butts, not nuts the butts. So it's fine. Um, yeah, so I, I'm going with Danielson as well, which, which it, this, this one around, we've had a lot of the same, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the same picks. There is, there's, there's not much room for error when it comes up. Uh, to this title belt because uh, I miss one and I'm I'm done. <laughs> I'm a goner. Hey, well, um, we got the bonus too. We didn't really touch on the bonus questions like who no. pins who in the tag team one. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. We do get into it pretty deep. Um, but uh, Danielson, man, yeah, I think too because, hey, I know we we can't predict what's going to happen. You know 
what people are going to do. If we could, the world would be a much better place. Um, so I don't think they're going to give it back to, to Moxley after he just, he just won it. He was the interim. He lost it to punk and then it's back up again. You know, they, they needed him in the tournament. He is an obstacle and he is, he is, he is the mountain when it comes mm-hmm. to that AEW world championship. He is the mountain right now, right? And Danielson and Moxley basically started the Blackpool Combat Club when Danielson wanted to to, to team up and do some uh, you know a little bit of tag team stuff and fo- form form a faction with Moxley, and they started this thing by blood. And John Moxley will not give up that title without blood from Danielson. So we're gonna we're gonna see a repeat of that because if we go back to what almost a year ago when they did that match, <laughs> that was ridiculous. So you're gonna you're gonna get a banger on top of a banger for the end of your night. That's that's what you're gonna get. And I agree, Danielson's gonna get it. Any title. Either of these two guys, any title either of these two guys touch gets gets pushed that much more. Listen, Moxley could win this title again, and it'll it'll elevate that much more. You know this mm-hmm. it, this company has pure professional wrestlers, which is what we know and love. Entertainment's good every now and again, but I like to get down a bare bones you know beating the ever loving shit out of each other and that's that's what we get with AEW we get that we get some real good grappling wrestling aspects but we get this so I'm I'm all in this for Danielson 100% and I'm even going to go ahead and say that he submits John Moxley mm. I know that's a feat that's a feat Moxley. and that's, that's He's saying he taps or he passes the fuck out. What do you I'm, think? I'm saying I'm saying Moxley taps. Mm. I'm saying Moxley taps to Danielson because that LaBelle lock ain't no joke. No, yeah, I could see a, I could see I could see a submission, but I think he would just pass out. I don't th- I don't know if he would tap. Have we ever even seen Moxley tap in AEW? I don't think we have, but I think that's where a respect factor comes in because they're gonna get in there, they're gonna get bloody. Moxley's going to get pushed to his limit, which only Danielson can do, in my opinion. And I think Moxley's going to tap. I think this will be the first time we've ever seen him tap in AEW. And and at that point, it'll just be it'll just be out of out of respect. I feel that. I feel that. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get to the butts here. So I've been seeing a lot of circulation online with uh, MJF winning this chip. Like some people thinking you can, you know, it's like a money in the bank briefcase. You could just cash it in. Um, I obviously don't think that, but what I do think is maybe at the last second, while the show is going on, right before the main event, he can somehow sneak his way into this match, or at some point mm. during the match, somehow con himself into getting put in it, and maybe just hanging out at ringside till they beat the shit out of each other, and then comes in and swoops in. Uh, I, that's just something that crossed in my mind. I've seen some rumors on the internet or some, you know, opinions and thoughts, speculation. So my thought was more along the lines of what you, what you first said, where I thought the chip was, you know, cash in anytime, anywhere for a match, right? Not like money in the bank or, you know, money in the bank briefcase where like the champion who just won could be half dead and they ring the bell while they're asleep in the ring. Like, you know, I, I do, I think MJF might, might demand uh, a title, a, a title match. I, I really, I don't, I think it'll be at full gear. I don't think it's going to be, you know, tonight, but I think at some point he's going to set up to use that chip. I think the chip can be used either way is the point I'm getting at. But I mm-hmm. think that he's and I and I, I don't know. I don't think MJF is going to win it. I think Brian. I think Danielson's going to have that, that that shit for a while, and all MJF's efforts are going to be wasted, like most of them are. 
It's a hot take. <laughs> yeah, that is a hot take, sir. But um, yeah, it's I, that one's gonna. I can't wait for that's you know. Yeah, both, cha- both world championship matches are what I'm most excited to see on, on Wednesday night. It's gonna Ab- be absolutely Ring of Honor and AEW. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah, but, I'm uh, really. I think I'm, and I'm hoping, but I think the match. Uh, I think the match of the night is going to be as as great as we know the Moxley and Danielson match is going to be. I think our match of the night is going to be the tag team match. I think that is going to blow the roof off the place like we've never seen a tag team match do. You know, and then and then Mox and Danielson are obviously going to follow that up. They're going to follow yeah. it up and they're going to put on a great show. But I think both of them are going to be on par. I don't think you're going to be able to get better matches than 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 those two that night. Every, every match is going to be great. I know. I mean, I know it sounds like I'm I'm picking straws here, like because there's mm-hmm. so much, there's so much, there's not that much room where it's like all these matches is like here, 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 here. Like there's going to be so close to being better than the next. Um, so, I mean, that's. That's our match predictions. That's what we usually do. We just sit on our phones, type some shit up, talk shit to each other, and call it a day, man. And now we're going to do it right here right here for you guys. I mean, it, it, me and this guy have been best friends. I'm going to date ourselves here. I apologize. Since, <laughs> so since, since 2006, right? And, and we've always said, why aren't, why aren't we doing this? And now, now we're doing it, and we're doing it for your viewing pleasure. And uh, we're listening. also, yeah, listening pleasure, however you want to do. I'm more of a visual guy. That's why I say that. Um, uh, I, I love watching people talk on podcasts. Um, but we're also going to be doing, it's in it's it's in the title, Jobber Bros. Like I said at the beginning, we love, we love jobbers. We love a good jobber. And we're here to praise the jobbers. So keep your eyes out. Or on Saturdays, we're going to post up a little video. Jobber of the week, where we're gonna go through, we're gonna look for the jobber that that did the best. Whether he got the shit kicked out of him the best, he took a power bomb the best, he whatever he did, he elevated that wrestler the best. We're gonna find it. We're gonna put him up, and uh, it's it's gonna be a fun time for those because there are some mwah, tremendous jobbers out there. Oh yeah. Speaking of Absolutely. jobbers, I'd say uh, I know we're not doing we you know we missed this Saturday, but I'd say for as for last week, give it to uh, Luigi Primo. Luigi, Luigi Primo, gets Primo. So our first ever <laughs> jobber of the week for our first one, we're gonna give it up to Luigi Primo. He's he's got he's got Domino's beat for sure. Yeah, wasn't even <laughs> in a fucking match. He's got the his no. teeth kicked in by Ethan Page in the back. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. It's great. Yeah, it's I tweeted it. it. <laughs> yeah. I, can watch, I can watch that clip for solid I could, five minutes yeah. in a row. So, all right. Well, I want to say thank you to everybody for listening, watching, doing whatever you do today. Uh, you know, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, get your bell notifications on when Jobber Bros drops new videos, and. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Jobber Bros. Yep, all at Jobber Bros. Make sure if you're listening as well to follow us on uh, whatever podcast station you're listening to, whether it's Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, whatever. We'll be on all of them. Uh, truly appreciate you listening. Any last thoughts, sir? Sir Smokes? That That is it, Sir Root. All right. Well, we will catch you guys later in the week. We're going to be doing a Grand Slam Rampage preview. And uh, we'll also review a little bit of uh, Dynamite uh, during that one as well. Yes. Catch you guys then.